There is a difference between learning something and mastering something. Between creation and animation. Today, I want to help you master skirts and blender. Okay guys, so for this method to get started, first thing we need to do is add a plane for our character. So I'm gonna do Shift A, Mesh, Plane, and then do RX90, then Enter. And then I'm just gonna do GZ, drag this plane up. So I'm gonna hit one, and I'm gonna make sure that this plane is in the exact center of my character, somewhere around right there. Looks pretty centered to me. And I'm gonna tab and drag these up. And I'll tell you what, at this point we're actually gonna add, and our modifiers go over, and we're gonna add a mirror modifier. And we're gonna select for our mirror object, select your character's rig, as well as make sure you've got, so for instance, I'm working on the X axis in this view mode, so I'm gonna keep axis X up, but we also want to turn on bisect. So I'm gonna turn on bisect X. And now I'm gonna hit tab and hold, hit G and control and that will bring it to the exact center. Okay, so now let's actually line this up more where we want it. So for a superhero kind of look, I'm gonna go for a V shape. So I'm gonna do G, Z, drag this down, and this can be much closer, so I'm gonna do G, X. And as you can see, it's looking like a little lopsided, so I'm just gonna try and get that so it's less lopsided. Something like that I think looks fairly nice. Uh, maybe even a little lower on this. And now you'll see that this isn't technically perfectly centered on my vertex group here. So another thing you can do if you're still seeing this issue is just simply drag this. You'll see it clipped together right there. I'm just gonna leave it right there and it should be fine. Okay. And that's the beauty of bisect. You'll see if I uh, just drag this even all the way, when I apply my mirror modifier, it will not be in this direction. It will still have the vertices at this point. So I can't explain exactly the logistics there, but it's a super duper nice, uh, nice modifier. So now at this point, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to extrude this out. So while we're doing that, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this cape here because that's gonna kind of get in our way while we're working on our skirt. So I'm gonna hide that. I'm going to select my object here and tab A and extrude. And now you'll see, here's a, just a friendly tip when you're doing skirts and you're trying to kind of decide where the skirt should begin and the seam line for it. Uh, you'll see that this would be awfully low for the back to have the skirt start. So we're going to want it more up than in the front. So kind of a rule of thumb that the skirt should kind of go slick around this point and above the buttocks. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to RX to rotate that and then we're gonna do GZ and I'm I'm pressing all these buttons because I want to keep this uh, roughly as centered as I possibly can so I don't have run into issues later. GZ something like that I think looks fairly nice. I'm actually gonna move this one uh, up as well and let's see. Okay, I think that looks pretty nice. Stay in tab, but go into your upper left corner for select faces, and let's delete some of these faces. I'm gonna delete those faces and the center face that it created. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, we're still leaving our mirror modifier on, by the way, and a lot of you might be thinking at this point, the best thing to do would just be to add a lot of edge loops, 
and then do the shrink wrap modifier. But there's a reason I'm not doing that, and that is because, and you'll see if you try to do it, it'll really jack up the geometry of this that you have to do so much repairs on it, it doesn't really save that much time. So at this point, I'm gonna manually uh, make this geometry kind of fold into the character, but it should be pretty easy because I've got the mirror modifier working on this side, so it won't be too bad. So I'm selecting these edges, and I'm gonna do Control B to bevel, and something like that. And let's add a couple loops in here, just so we have roughly the same shape all around. And now we're just pulling uh, these different shapes to the right spots. So I'm gonna start with the front and kind of work my way around. So I'm gonna do RX. And I'm also gonna turn on proportional editing up here. And RX, I'm gonna scale that up. And let's do RY and bring that around there. And that looks pretty close already. And let's mess with these edges a bit. So I've got this one and honestly, I'm just, I'm not even gonna hit like X or anything. I'm just gonna G and then kind of move this uh, to the spot I want it. And I'm gonna control zoom this in so it doesn't mess up our mirroring that we're doing too much. Okay, and I'm gonna keep messing with this so it looks nice. And again, we're trying to get roughly as close as we can to our character, but uh, and it can. This part can be a little finicky, but I promise it's worth it to do it this way rather than shrink wrap modifier. And let's just make sure this side is not having any issues. It's having some, but I think we might fix a lot of those once we apply the mirror modifier. Uh, let's move this in just a bit. So I'm going to do G Y, push it in and R X, rotate it, get these faces just manually moved over and rotate them. And yeah, you guys can kind of see the vision here. I'm just really just trying to get this, take my time and get it close to my character in the position that I want. Uh, this is a, a pretty important thing for my method. You'll see I am going to do some weight painting on this. Uh, I, I should say weight paint transfers on this. So in my opinion, this looks pretty good. We're actually adding a solidify modifier, so I'm not super stressed about some of these minor collisions that are happening. Uh, if you really care, you can fix it. I'm going to go over here to more modifiers and I'm going to apply this mirror modifier and you'll see you have some pretty nice topology uh, on that thing now and for instance I'm going to turn off smooth uh, proportional editing here and now you'll see I actually have in the center the vertices are in the correct spot and this object is attached on both sides so that's kind of what we want so now uh, this roughly is the shape we want. I'm going to add a couple of modifiers, but first let's add a loop cut right here. And now we're going to add some modifiers. For instance, I'm going to add a solidifier modifier. And also I'm going to right click and shade this smooth. Uh, let's up that. And then I'm also going to add a subdivision. And this is just kind of me making the belt look nicer. Uh, I'm even actually going to do at just scale this. I mean, so I'm going to right click, set origin, origin geometry, and just scale it down a little bit so it's a little closer to the body. And that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with roughly our shape that we have going on, maybe lower. So now I'm going to transfer some weights onto this belt. Select your belt, select your armature while holding shift, and then right click and go to parent and armature to form. So now that belt should technically follow my character. However, we don't have the weights on it, so it won't know what it's supposed to follow. So now select your character that should be rigged and weighted. And I'm gonna select that belt. And I'm going to go over to weights, uh, weight paint, weights, and transfer weights. 
And now make sure uh, source layers selected that instead of active layer you do by name, this does make a big difference. So please do that. And now I'm gonna head back over to object and you'll see if we move our character in an animation, uh, we have that move properly. Now I already know what weights are messing my belt up. So I'm actually gonna take care of those right now. A lot of times won't be necessary for you guys, but if you are curious about how to do really nitpicky weight painting, here's a video you can check out. It's kind of, it's a part two of a series I have, but it does explain a lot about weight painting. Okay, so now with that selected, we're gonna head over here to our vertex groups. And I already know, otherwise I'd click on the weight paint view mode, what weights are affecting it. And it is the left leg up, so I'm gonna minus that. And the right leg up, and I'm gonna minus that. And you'll see that kind of fixed my issues I was having just now. And so now it's more of a straight shape, and it is a belt, like a metal belt that I'm gonna do, so it's fine that it looks so rigid. That's kind of what we want. So I'm gonna go back to frame zero here. Now I'm going to hit tab on that belt. I'm going to go to x-ray mode, and I'm going to make sure I select this bottom row here. So to do that, just hold alt, select, that bottom row at least one of the vertices and it should select all the vertices on that bottom row and now I'm going to do control D which will duplicate those vertices and then while it's still selected do P and selection this will make it into a separate object and so now I'm going to go over to that vertice that we just made and I'm going to real fast minus the solidifier and subdivision that we added, but keep this armature. I'm going to do tab. Now I'm going to do A, E to extrude and G, Z to bring it down. And now I'm going to toggle off x-ray mode and just show you guys already we kind of have a skirt so I'm gonna do GZ bring it that way and that is already a fairly good distance for this skirt for this character uh, something like that I think will look end up looking pretty nice for Raven so now we need to add some edge loops into this part and don't worry too much if you're seeing this like overlap uh, areas over here um, in the end that hopefully won't be a big deal and I'll show you why so now what we're gonna do is we're going to tab do control R and add some loop cuts so let's focus on the back first and we're gonna make as many square ish shapes as we can if you've seen some of my other tutorials you'll know I really care about having things in a general square form and now you'll see me in the front, I'm adding a bunch of loop cuts. So I'm just doing control R and adding loop cuts because I need to make these shapes squarish as well. And there you have it, even though it's kind of different shapes, they're all square. And then I'm going to A and subdivide. And that gives us quite a bit of decent geometry there for a cloth simulation. However, we have one major thing we have left to do. So for this cloth simulation, what we have to do next is make sure your object selected, head over to your vertex, what is that called? Your object data properties. And we are going to add a new group into the vertex groups and we're gonna call it skirt. And now for skirt, I'm gonna tab and you'll see currently if I say select, nothing selected for skirt right now. So we need to assign a group and that will be this group that we originally created. So this group technically is our only group that even has weight paints on it because the rest of these were created after the weight painting was done. So since we just duplicated this group, it still has the weight paint, so it's the only group that's gonna hold its shape. So we needed to assign to that group with full weight, then tab back out, and now I'm gonna head over here and add a cloth. I already have settings I prefer, but if you wanna know those settings, check out this video uh, in the upper right corner. 
and I'm gonna set it to frame 50 because I think this will just work first go and so I do have uh, on my character I've got these cloth this cloth sim underneath so because I have this cloth sim underneath I'm gonna want this skirt to be slightly further away from my character otherwise normally I'd go over in the cloth sim and I would drag everything down completely however this time for the object collision I'm gonna keep it up and do 0.02 for my collision distance so it'll just make it so the the cloth is 0.02 meters away from my character okay and now also make sure self collision is enabled drag that distance all the way down I'm going to make it so my gravity is set to 5 and let's see okay so here's the pivotal moment so in shape in your cloth sim go to pin and we created a new pin group for the skirt and I named it skirt so make sure you've done that and also I forgot to mention for your collisions quality two is generally not what I prefer I just go for something around 12 and I think it ends up looking very nice usually and now let's try just baking that in and seeing how it goes okay so that's finished baking and let's see how it turned out and as you can see that turned out pretty good overall and I'm happy with uh, the general shape of it so I'm going to shade smooth and let's add some modifiers now that we have our cloths and baked I'm gonna add a solidify modifier and you'll see that took care of a lot of those overlapped meshes and then I'm also going to add a subdivision modifier so one area that's kind of bothered me is down here where it has a little gap in the belt so now I'm gonna fix the belt I didn't do this earlier because we copied the vertex group and that would have messed it up so what we're gonna do is head over here to frame zero and I'm just gonna add some loop cuts into this belt that will help it look a little nicer and fix some of those annoying areas uh, that don't just quite meet up so one thing I also think would look kind of nice is I'm gonna take this belt and while holding alt should work there we go I'm just going to scale that out just a little bit and then I'm going to loop cut around that so it looks kind of nice and there you have it I think you should have a pretty nice looking belt and as you can see it now covers that cloth sim and let's head back into our animation and there you go you've got uh, this is a shorter skirt because it's Raven. Raven doesn't even have a skirt. <laughs> so, and you'll see our cloth sim looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to add textures to it and you'll have a nice looking skirt. And I will say I did a shorter skirt. However, this method will work with any length of skirt. Um, I only did a short one because it's Raven and this because we used pin groups and weight paint transfers, this skirt is 100% able to animate with your character, as well as all of the rest of her clothing that is also cloth simulated. So if you're wondering ever about cloth simulations, I have a bunch of video about how I do clothes in Blender and a specific video talking about how I animate and use pin groups. So if you're curious about that, check out this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope this was helpful. If this video was helpful, please consider leaving a like, comment, or subscribing. I don't care which one of the three, but any will help my channel greatly. Thank you so much.